Next one. What about the memory? What's up with memory? Tell me, tell me everything. What's up with memory? Ooh, inv oh, juicy. So now we have, we're generating an invalid assembly. Ooh, I like that. So we expected that, but whatever we had here is basically invalid combination in here. Ooh, I like that. Okay. 3400. The question is, I want to kind of know what's on that specific address, right? So what's up with that specific address? And I think we can try to figure it out. So what's the instruction there? What's the instruction? So 3400. Okay. So in port that port, uh, after compiling everything, so let's actually find the compilation, right? Uh, so then uh, compile, compile a program into ops. Okay, so we give the file name, we compile everything into global array of ops, and then we can do the following thing. We can take 34, um, right, so it's gonna be output, uh, 3400. So this is the index of the operation that causes the problem, right? So that is very cool. I'm gonna take the size of the operation uh, and multiply it by uh, the address. So now we have an upset, uh, upset within the ops structure and I'm gonna add it in here. And there we go, we have the, um, the, you know, the instruction that caused the problem. So then I'm gonna take the op type and I think there was something like op type as a string and I can essentially print this entire thing. So I can just do puts and there we go. So I can just print what was the instruction there. Uh, and we can also surround that with some sort of like a frame or whatnot. So this is going to be puts and I'm going to put this thing as well in here. Okay, so I'm going to recompile the compiler and then call the compiler yet again. Okay, and handle data really uh this is because i forgot to do plus in here there we go mm, okay argument is expected to be integer but got a pointer oh yeah because i need to read it as an integer thank you so much you see type checker actually catches errors yes so that's why type checking is important it is in fact very much important Okay, so during the compilation, it will, okay, push global mem. And of course, I forgot a very important thing. I forgot the new line in here, uh, right. So it's a push global memory. Ha. Huh. So what is the actual value of that thing? What is the actual, did it turn out to be like a negative? We might as well, by the way, also, find its location right so we might as well also find its location so here is the op uh we pushed that op and now we can form a block where i'm not using that thing directly i'm just duping it right so i'm duping this operation and i'm printing its type on top of that i can now dupe uh and take its location right so we can take its location and uh then put that location right like this and then I probably want to print something like this puts and then we can essentially uh, I don't know it would be nice to maybe align it like that but who knows maybe it would be better to do it like that right so here is the location and here is the type that way I'll be able to actually jump there okay so op lock there is no such thing as op lock because the location of the operation is located in its token so the first thing i need to do i need to take the token uh right and then within the token i can extract the location right so there's like nested structures and this is how you access fields of nested structures so there's a operation there's a token within that and within the token there is a location and then you just use that to print the location on the screen um all right so we're compiling the compiler and now we need to do that again, but with the new version of the compiler, right? So it is located in here. So it's a str buffer size, str buffer size. And why does that thing cause a problem? That is very fascinating because a size of, is that the first ever memory? So it's in port port though. 
Hmm, so I suppose it has a value. It has a very weird value. Um, oh wait, am I an idiot? I am an idiot. I'm supposed to be compiling the test case. Okay. All right. I think. Uh, but who knows? We'll see. Uh, I think I'm supposed to be uh, compiling the test case. Uh, so now, um, if I try to do something like this, and what was the test case actually? Uh, it was the memory. Uh, right. And if I try to do that thing like that, right. Uh, it's op push integer. Nice. That makes way more sense. It was not about the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was about the push integer, and we just pushed a very big integer, which is essentially you in. Okay. All right. So I'm really glad that I actually put that thing in here. So Def Wave, thank you so much for uh, tier one subscription, your first subscription, by the way, and welcome to our Epic Porth Club. How about that? And Int82, uh, thank you so much for three months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome back to our Epic Porth Club. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Uh, so. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Interesting. Tisauding. Mm, so I watch all your videos, I love them. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So essentially we have a bug in put you. Right. We have a bug in put you. Oh, even Fasm complains about that. Yeah, yeah even Fasm. Uh, which causes this entire thing to not work. Um, I think I kind of know what the hell is going on. I think I kind of know. So all of the integers throughout the port are treated as unsigned ones. And except for the comparison. Except for the comparison. So that is kind of interesting. So, and we're probably using comparison to decide when to stop parsing the integer, right? Because we're using the usual, uh, you know, number to string conversion where we, in a loop, divide by 10 and mod by 10. And the result of mod by 10 is put into array of characters, then converted to characters, then reversed, and then put on the screen. Right. And essentially, because of these unsigned integers being so large, the comparison operation probably treats it as a negative one, which leads to the loop uh, closing, like exiting earlier and then not printing anything. So I think I have a couple of ideas in here. Right. So the fix should be as simple as, uh, okay, so parse int, try parse int. There we go. So we're going to be doing not while... Uh, oh, it's, it's a parse int. Um, so it's a put you then. Yeah, I think it's about put you. Because we successfully we can successfully parse all of that. Uh, put you. Uh -huh. This is the problem. Literally this thing. Literally this thing. Because comparison uh, is signed, but all of the rest of the operations are unsigned. <laughs> Um, for for reasons, I think the easiest way to uh, actually no, uh, you know combat that is essentially replace this with not equals, right? Uh, that way, diff diff and mod are unsigned ones, so they will work. Yeah, I think that's the fix. That's literally the fix. Uh, so let me try to recompile the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So that's that, and then. There's the memory. Works. Fixed it. Literally fixed it. Okay. So, and another thing, I probably want to get rid of that debug uh, output. Right. So, by the way, all of that stuff with, uh, you know, inter operations, all of the mathematical operations only being uh, unsigned and comparison being signed, it's, it is only temporary just to get the, you know, 
things going, right? It's all going to be fixed at the end. I'm not saying that this is going to be the final version of the language. Of course, like there's a lot of weird stuff in the language going on, but they are all for the reason just to allow us to get going. Uh, right, so... Mm -hmm. Did you switch from Nazm to Fasm? Yeah, kind of, but I st do, uh, still support both of them. You can actually switch between them. Uh, right. So you can use Fasm or you can use Nazm. And the reason why is because they have slightly different syntax. So the compiler has to generate slightly different files uh, for them to, to work properly. So that's why there's like two separate flags in here. So Fasm is just a little bit faster. Uh, if you try to recompile the whole compiler with Nazm, this is how much time it will take. So the compilation took half of a second and type checking two seconds and then Nazm, which will take probably five seconds, right? And the whole compilation took seven seconds, right? So this is recompiling the compiler with itself. If I switch to Fasm, right? So look at the time. It took two seconds, right? So it's, it's way faster. Uh, and again, I have no idea why, uh, not, what exactly Nazm is doing. And I think uh, we did a stream on that, actually. We did all of that on the stream. We did all of that on the stream. So let me find, it's on its Sodium Daily. Sodium Daily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So probably have to go there. Uh, it's called We Need Faster Assembler. And uh, essentially we explored Fasm and adapted Fasm to Porth in this specific, this specific session. I'm gonna put that link in the description as well. Uh, right. Uh, I think I lost something. There we go. Uh, we need FASTA assembler. There we go. So we can find it in here. It was actually a rather interesting session. It was a rather interesting session. Uh, okay, so what I wanted to do... Uh, Porth dot Porth. So I want you to get rid of this thing. Uh, so this is the, the whole fix of the, uh, of the problem, apparently. I really like that. Um, so this is the memory, right? So let me try to do, um, you know, test. I'm gonna just run this entire thing. And okay, uh, yeah, because I forgot to recompile the, the compiler. Uh, of course, uh, let's recompile the compiler because I already removed everything that needs to be removed. And let's run the test now. Cool, everything's fine. Uh, failed. Mm -hmm. Porth dot porth. Fix this thing. And let's push that right into the repo. 